What's up everybody, Kev here, back again with another video for you guys, and today we're switching it up a little bit. You guys know I like to do things revolving around gaming, tech, streaming, all that, and what fits into all that, of course, would be a PC, a gaming PC, work PC, streaming PC, all that and more. So today, I'm going to show you how to build a gaming or work PC in 2018 for only five to $600. Let's get into it right after this. As you can see here, I have all my parts, I have all my supplies, I have everything I need to. All my parts and links to these parts are going to be down below in the description if you're interested in any of them. So we're going to go over it a little bit. The parts that I do have, as you can see, I got a Ryzen, the AMD Ryzen. We got a Kingston 120 gigabyte SSD. We have the MSI Geoforce GTX 1050. We got ourselves a really awesome case that I got off a of Newegg. And we have the ASRock. A320M motherboard as well. We got eight gigs of DDR4 RAM. Like I said, everything down below. Really loving this case. But as you can see, I got the back peeled off. I got it completely opened. I'm ready to go. And our first step is we are gonna make sure we get everything untangled, get everything out of the way, uh, get the screws out, all the extra peripherals and stuff that we need. Clean it up inside, get it nice and tidy. We're gonna bust out our 430 watt power supply. That's going to be the first thing that I'm going to put into my PC. So we're going to bust that open and we are going to put that and align that up in the back. So we got it all out. We're going to line it up and we're just going to screw it in. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. So as you can see, I got my screws. We've matched the power supply to the back of the tower. And just as easy as it looks, we're just going to go ahead and screw it in. And of course, I do have this stuff sped up because these are little tedious things that take a few minutes to do. And who really wants to watch me screw in a screw for two minutes? So this stuff is a little sped up for you guys. But here we go. We got the power supply all put in. And we are going to be set and good to go on to the next step. And for the next step, what I like to do is I pull out my motherboard, which most people are going to do when they get ready to build their PC. And once we have our motherboard all laid out, I'm going to grab my CPU. This does differ with Intel and AMD, so check with your motherboards, manuals, and stuff like that to see how it gets set up. But I'm going with the AMD Ryzen 3 at the moment, so we're going to go ahead and get that CPU put into our motherboard. So now I have my Ryzen 3. We're going to pop that open. Make sure you're very careful with this. The pins are very, very fragile and sensitive. You don't want to bend any of the pins. You want to be very careful. Same goes with your motherboard. Be very careful of your motherboard and where you put it at because it's very thin and it can crack and snap very easily. So we have our Ryzen. We're going to go ahead and we're going to match it with our motherboard CPU holder. And you, there will be a little arrow on the corner of your CPU to match the little arrow on your motherboard. That way you can neatly align it and you can go ahead and place it in. Make sure you're not using any force. You don't want to go ahead and force it or shove it in or bend any of those pins. You want to make sure it neatly falls into place. If it doesn't neatly fall into place the first time, don't push it in. Pull it back out and make sure it drops neatly back into place. Once you have that neatly dropped into place, we have our fan with it as well. We are going to go ahead and grab the lever and we're going to clamp that down. Be careful, but don't be afraid to put a little bit of pressure on it because it does have a little bit of pressure clamping down that CPU to make sure it's nice and locked in. Next will be our CPU cooler. Now that we have our CPU snapped into place nice and secure, we're going to grab our cooler. I have the cooler that came with the CPU. Most do come with it, and it usually has a pre-attached thermal paste on it. We're going to go ahead and push down onto the CPU, and we're going to make sure that we screw in the right area of our cooler. If your cooler did not come with thermal paste already on it or a separate thermal paste came in the box, make sure you don't apply any more than a pea size to the CPU. Once we're all done and we have that screwed in and we have it placed all nice and neatly, there will be a four pin fan connector. I basically want to grab that fan connector and attach it to our motherboard in the right area. Now with that plugged in, that will give our cooler power. Next, we're going to move over onto our RAM, and we're just going to locate the DIMM slots here. I'm just using one 8 gig stick, so it's pretty simple. I'm just going to match it to the DIMM slot and pop it in. If you're using multiple, it will be in opposite order. You're going to lay them out like 3, 1, 4, 2 instead of 1, 2, 3, 4. 
um, but for the sake of this video I only have one 8 gigabyte RAM stick so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that in once again be careful but don't be afraid to apply force sometimes you may think you have your RAM popped in but it hasn't popped in all the way so go ahead and make sure you pop that in and you hear that click and then dim slots lock in now we have our IO shield on here now I'm gonna go ahead and lay down my tower and next we're going to pop in our motherboard we're going to lay it down most towers that you get nowadays do have pre-installed motherboard standoffs it will all be different depending on the size of your motherboard of course but like i said for the sake of this video before we have our preset standoffs for our motherboard it's going to fit in just like this and i'm going to go ahead and screw it right in make sure when you're screwing it in to be very careful because once again it is thin and you could possibly crack your motherboard if you put way too much force and tighten it up too tight we have our motherboard now successfully easily installed and we're going to stand it back up your pre-installed fan exhaust cord will be laying right here as well so you can go ahead and just take that and match it up to an existing fan port on your motherboard and from here on out before you install your graphics card you have a mix and match thing going on here. We have labels on our cords and you're just gonna match it up with the labels on the motherboards, the ports and stuff like that. You can use your manual, it will tell you it's just matching cord to the plug-in area. Um, way too hard to zoom in on every cord that I plug in and too tedious to show you, but this is actually simpler than it sounds. You have one cord, it's labeled and on the port or the area on the motherboard or wherever it's supposed to be plugged in will have that matching description so you know where to plug it in. So now that we have all these plugged in and cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and pop in our SSD. I have a Kingston SSD. Now as you guys know, running your OS on a SSD or maybe you don't know running your OS your operating system on a SSD is so much faster than running it on a regular hard drive we are opting for SSD for our operating system and we are going to use a two terabyte hard drive to store all other files but running our operating system on a SSD making it turn on and have a boot time of under 30 seconds so now that we have the SSD plugged into our motherboard we connected it using the SATA cable that came with our SSD, of course. We have that all connected up. We have our wires matching up. I just installed the graphics card. I have the MSI Geoforce GTX 1050. I think it works well. It's a good budget gaming card, a uh, good budget graphics card. And we have it all set up. The graphics card is really easy. You pop it into its slot and everything matches up in the back with the IO plates, everything matches up with the back of the tower. So the rest of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. I just pretty much show you the parts you need, what you need, how to set it up and how to place it. The rest really does match up like pieces of a puzzle. So that doesn't really need to be explained too far. It just looks more intimidating than it really is, but it's just an adult puzzle, honestly, once it comes down to the wires and the placement. We have it all set up, we have power running to it, we have it plugged in before you go ahead and clean it all up and close off the tower you want to of course make sure that it's working so you don't have to tear it all apart again and find out what the problem is <laughs> So we have our computer running. It is alive. It has power. The lights are turning on. The fans are on. And we are running. Looks like everything is good to go. So we are going to wait. We have it plugged up to our monitor to test. We're going to wait to see if it pops up. And we have something popped up. Reboot and select proper boot device. Looks like we have the computer set up properly. So we are going to grab a USB stick with a Windows 10 operating system already on it, ready to go. We are gonna pop that into the top of the tower. So that is awesome. Now, as we can see, we're running, we're good to go. Now, had we not been good and we had the PC already put away and cleaned up, we would have had to tear it apart and refix it and find problems. So this is why you wanna do a test launch and set it up before you do put it back together. So we got it running, open. We're gonna pop in this USB stick right here. I am going to also attach a keyboard. We do need a keyboard, so I'm gonna attach a keyboard, my USB. We're gonna go ahead and hit any key now that I got my Windows 10 plugged into the top of my tower. Rebooting, and as you can see, we have a Windows 10 logo popping up. It's reading our boot device. And then the rest is pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna activate our windows. We're gonna set it all up. We're gonna clean it up. We're gonna set our preferences, and we're just gonna wait a few minutes and we're gonna get Windows 10 installed onto our 
operating system and we're going to be good to go. And then afterwards is when we're going to clean it up. We're going to go ahead and do a Windows install, pick our drive. Everything is good to go. Copy and Windows files, getting ready for installation, installing features, installing updates, and then finishing up. Going to do another restart, reboot of our Windows, and we should be able to pop right into a fresh, clean Windows 10. Starting services, getting ready. And bam, just like that, we're going to go ahead and set up our settings, set everything up, choose our privacy, all that good stuff and our preferences, and we are good to go. We are on a fresh new Windows 10 on a computer that we just built easily in under an hour. We just sped up the time, of course, for the sake of the video, maybe 40, 45 minutes. We have the PC completely built and we are good to go. It's that easy, that simple. Now we have built this PC links in the description below for around $600 for all the stuff, not including the monitor. We're just talking, of course, PC and PC parts. Now that we have it all finished and all set up, I'm going to show you afterwards, which puts it up a little over a thousand, the final product. We have our new monitor, the LG ultra wide 25 inch. We have our test monitor as our side monitor. Now we went ahead and grabbed a mechanical keyboard with led lights, a nice led gaming mouse, extended mouse pad, some Logitech speakers and subwoofers. We went with some extended mouse pads with some Razer wrist supports. We also have our two terabyte Barracuda hard drive plugged in now. LED lights glowing, looking good. We have everything matching. I also went ahead and grabbed another two terabyte external hard drive for games. All that good stuff and this is the final setup and once again everything is linked in the description down below we did build this pc for only around 600 dollars the rest of these peripherals are linked down below if you do like any of them but that put it over to the thousand mark with the monitors keyboards mouse uh pads all that good stuff and more so i hope this video did help at least break it down and take some of the tension off and kind of help you guys understand it's not as hard as it looks. You pretty much install a few things here and there, and then you go ahead and match the cords like a puzzle piece and match every item with its dedicated area, just like some Legos, like I was saying earlier. So I do hope this video helped, and I hope it takes the intimidation away, and you guys are now more inclined to maybe build yourself a PC, whether it be for work, video games, all that good stuff and more. So like I said before, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but some people will probably still ask. That's why I repeat myself. Links are in the description down below for every part and how to set all that up. So I hope this video did help everybody. Thanks again. This is Kev. Hope you build that PC and you enjoy it. Catch you guys on the next video. Be sure to subscribe because I keep you guys updated and show you guys a whole bunch of cool stuff that I think you'll enjoy. Catch you guys next week on my next video. Thanks again. This is Kev and I'm out.